to Katrina's Creations. This is going to be a haul and a review of said items in the haul. So first off, what am I wearing? This is a crocheted top. It's called the Kalaheo. Um, I got it from Expression Fiber Arts. Um, it is all like half double crochet and then I added scallops around the neck and around the sleeve and the hem. I do wear this a lot and this is made out of a comfy cotton blend. I don't remember the name of the color. Or no, it's it's not comfy cotton blend. I lied. Not on purpose. It's a Hobby Lobby uh, yarn that's a cotton blend, but I forget what it was called. Anyway, yeah, it's Hobby Lobby. So let's get started with what I bought. The last haul that I showed you, I had bought some Knit Crate yarn um, to dye um, because my daughter and granddaughter are going to come over and we're going to dye yarn together. So this is what I bought last time. So just for reference, I have four of these and these are uh, Knit Picks Palette Fingering Weight Yarn and I just bought the white because we're going to dye it. It is 100% Peruvian Highland wool. So I bought that and then we wanted to play with some other items to dye. So I also bought Chroma Twist and this is a bulky weight yarn. It is 70% superwash wool, 30% nylon, and it is a five weight. Um, let me get this up close so you can kind of see what it looks like. So there you can see it. It is bulky weight. Uh, let's see. There's 127 yards per 100 gram skein. And this is part of the line that's called their bear yarn, which means it's not dyed. I could not find the bear yarn that was the palette yarn, which is why I bought it in white here, um, because I can do the same thing with it. So I bought one skein of this, and this is bulky weight. And then I bought four skeins. So altogether, we're going to have um, nine skeins of yarn to to play around with. And some of this I might divide. I'm going to talk to my granddaughter and my daughter and see if they want to uh, dye entire skeins or if we want to break them up into mini skeins. Um, I'm thinking some mini skeins for the, the palette yarn, which is the fingering weight. This is Andy's Del Campo. It's an Aran weight. This is also the Bear brand, so it's, it means there's no dye in it at all. It's 164 yards. It is a four weight, so it is considered worsted, but it's a heavy worsted. Aaron is slightly heavier than your average worsted. Um, and it is 100% Peruvian, or just says Highland wool. It doesn't say Peruvian Highland wool. So that is this. And you can see looking at it, it definitely looks thicker than your average worsted weight. And I have four skeins of that. So that is what I got from Knit Picks. Now I got some other items as well, and I bought these off of Timu a while back. First thing I got was two sets of scissors, like the embroidery scissors. Um, the other set that I have is has gold handles, but this one is like an iridescent, kind of a peacocky blue type of thing. I thought this would match my backpack that I did a review of a while back. The colors are perfect. It comes with a little plastic cover on the points because I will say these are very sharp. I have used them. Um, I'm trying to keep these specifically for cutting yarn with so they stay nice and sharp. Um, and I think I paid under a dollar for these. They were like 97 cents a piece. Totally worth it because they are all metal and they seem to be well made and they are very sharp. So I bought two of those. And then I bought this, and it says Makeup Beauty. It's intended to be used as a makeup case. It has a handle right here, built in. I'm not using it as a makeup case. I'm using it as a Bible, Bible cover. Well, not so much a cover, my Bible fits in it. So, let me take it out. And then I have a a journal in here as well. I try to write something that I'm thankful for every morning after I read my Bible. So 
anyway so you can see it's pretty deep and I did measure my Bible ahead of time to make sure this would fit in here so you can see this is it's it's pretty good size it's about two and a half inches this way and then this is detachable it is a velcro right here so you can actually take this off and it's kind of metallic it's a vinyl um, but it's kind of a gold metallic and this is a zipper pouch which I have Oh, it's, divi it's a divided one. I didn't notice this. If you look at well, let me take this out because it'll fall. This I got from Knit Crate years ago, and they're highlighter pens, and you can just take off one at a time, and they have different colors. So I had that in there, but I didn't realize this pouch actually has two dividing sections in it. I'm not an affiliate for Timu or anything. Um, and then it also has, this is intended for your makeup brushes, I'm using it for a pen, and if I add any other pens, there's plenty of space. I can put some across here, and then it has this little plastic protector so it doesn't get on anything else. So that's the one thing I bought. Then I bought this. It says Crochet for a Happier You. It's a nice sturdy vinyl. And it is a zip case. I bought this to go inside the backpack because I bought, and I'm using one, so I will show you what I'm not using right now. Um, I'll use one of these larger ones so you can kind of get an idea what I'm thinking of here. I bought this to house my Tunisian crochet hooks, and there is, there's all these little pouches, and I haven't filled them up. There's ones in between here, so the elastics are pretty good sized because I've even got really large, well, the largest one here, which is a, where's the, uh, this is a 12 millimeter. So it's a large one and it fit in here with no problem. And then I used this little like uh, pouch thing at the bottom to wind up the cords and stick them in. So you can see I've just kind of got it in like that. So, and then it has this clear zipper pouch that you can put other supplies in. So that's what I got it for. Now the review of these Tunisian crochet hooks. Um, I like them. I will say that the cord is very, very long. I haven't experimented with this, but I have found that I can push this bead It's the speed can pull forward and this little end here, I'm thinking I could maybe cut the cording and move this little bead and re-glue it in here to make the cord shorter. I might do this because I mean, it's like three feet long. Um, I guess if you were doing an Afghan, it would be fine, but it just seems a little overkill. Now this is the larger one and with it, the join looks fine and it seems to be smooth enough so you can see it right there it seems to be smooth like a smooth transition but the small one that I'm using which this is about this close to the same size I noticed that right at the seam where it joins right here where let's see if I get this close enough where this cord comes up and it joins there's a seam right here when you're feeling it like this it feels perfectly fine but I noticed when I was crocheting with it that my yarn kept snagging and sticking on it so what I did do and now it seems to be working much better um, I, I used an emery board like what you file your fingernails with and I just filed a little bit around the edges to make it a little smoother transition. And now it seems to be working well, but I mean, in all honesty, plastic crochet hooks, I like the feel of them, but they don't slide. The stitches don't slide as easily as they do on metal, which is what I'm used to. So um, otherwise the hook seems to be good. The hook part itself is not, it's not a real deep necked hook as you can see here and I'll show it to you on the larger one it'll probably show up better 
but again it's a plastic hook so they can't make it notched in here where it's a little bit smaller like you would with a metal a metal hook so those are those products and then I saw this on the secret yarnery and it it caught my interest and I wanted to give it a try it was only like I think six or seven dollars and I actually really like it and that is this now this is like a yarn caddy it comes apart in two pieces it is wood I have no idea what kind of wood um, I'm guessing pine um, so anyway it's just a wood with a a dowel in the end and then this end and You put your yarn on and it spins. And it spins very, very easily. Um, now I got it all tangled up. There we go. I'm finding I really like it and you can see how easily it is pulling with this yarn. So I'm real happy with that. The first thing I was concerned was was that maybe this base wouldn't have enough weight to it and that it would just kind of slide across the table or fall or whatever. I haven't had that problem. I mean, I guess I could put like little rubber stickies underneath here if I wanted to, but I really haven't had any problem because it's it's not grabbing or anything. It pulls very easily. I haven't had a problem. I really actually like this. Now, this works with a regular skein like this or one that you uh, use a yarn winder on. It will work. Now, if you've got like a ball of yarn or a skein like one of these, this is not going to work on it. This you're going to have to either wind onto a winder so that it looks like this kind of skein, or you're going to have to wind it into a ball and then use a yarn bowl, which if I've got a ball of yarn, I use the yarn bowl. Um, it just keeps it from rolling around on the floor. But... Um, yeah, for things that are already hand rolled, I really am liking this. I was very pleasantly surprised. Um, and like I said, it was only about $7, something like that when I got it. So I'm real happy with that. I'm real happy with the products that I got. Um, the crocheted, or the Tunisian crochet hooks, I'm happy with them. I prefer metal, but anytime you put a cord with a join, you're going to have a little rough spot, even on my really expensive uh, interchangeable knitting needles I still have things snag right there anytime there's a seam you're gonna have a snagging issue potentially so um, but yeah I've been real happy with what I got um, and if you're looking for an idea like this and don't want to spend the six dollars for it um, what I have used in the past is a large margarine tub like a big margarine tub this is how to do it on the cheap because um, I've done this when I am crocheting or knitting in the car and I don't want it to roll around on the floor of the car. I use the big margarine tub. I punch a hole in the top, put the yarn into the margarine tub, thread, through the, thread the end through the lid where I've made the hole and then just snap the lid on and the yarn stays inside the margarine tub and you can pull right out and it's not going anywhere other than the margarine tub. That's an idea. Another idea, now I've done it before, but I haven't used it this way, is if you have some cute teacup or uh, teapots, you can actually put the yarn in the teapot and thread the end of the yarn up from the inside of the teapot, thread it through the spout and out, and then you would just be pulling your yarn. Much like this yarn caddy, you'd be pulling it through the spout of the teapot. So just some cheap ideas that are kind of fun, especially if you have some decorative teapots that you want to display, you can use them as yarn caddies. So that is it for today. I hope you've enjoyed this haul. If you haven't already, make sure you enter into the yarn advent calendar giveaway that will be, the winner will be announced on July 25th. You can click the video right here and that will give you all the info on how to get entered and everything. And uh, yeah, so thanks for watching and I will see you again on Saturday. Bye everybody.